first thing I want to say is what a huge pleasure it is to see this painting in the flesh. And I want to talk about, I suppose, the backstory of this painting, its relationship to James K. Baxter. There's, there's nothing on the painting itself which indicates that connection. There's something you sort of have to find out about. And quite often that is the case with McCann's paintings. They do have quite an elaborate context that helps you understand and appreciate them, at least I find it so. Both Baxter and McCann were Dunedin boys. Colin was a little bit older, he was born in 1919, James Baxter was born in 1926, so there was a seven year age difference. But it's always struck me how extraordinary it was that out of that same quite small city, two major religious artists, uh, and I'm talking about major in world terms, uh, should emerge in exactly the same time and place. It's, why was that? Is it just pure coincidence or is there something something else? There are so many parallels between Baxter and McCann as artists. <coughs> their attachment to the landscape of Otago. A second was their deep attachment to religion all through their lives. A further point of connection as their lives developed was their strong interest in and attachment to things Māori. Partly this came about through the circumstances of their personal lives. There was a real falling out between them. Uh, and this was around about 1970. And then within a year or two of that, Baxter dropped dead in the street in Auckland at the age of 46. And they were still unreconciled at that point. And it had a very profound effect on McCann that this, the Baxter had died and they were still estranged. And soon after Baxter died, he, he made a little painting which he gave to Jackie Baxter. And it's, it's this little painting. It's tiny. It's not much bigger than the sheet that it's printed on here. And it's called, it's got the title written up the side, vertically up the side, and the title is Jim Passes the Northern Beaches. It's hardly an exaggeration to say that the whole year after Baxter died in October 72, that Colin was obsessed by his memory, and most of the work that he made in that year had something to do with Baxter, one way or another. I guess it was Easter 1973, and he did a whole host of drawings, must have been about 50 of them, mostly in charcoal, out at Murawai, where he had his studio. And, um, and the common theme of these drawings was, as he called them, jet out from Murawai, and most of them consists of a jet plane flying out from Mungaree towards Australia, probably. But this is the sort of form that the drawings took. This one's called Jet Out from Ahipa, and same as the, as the painting here. Many of you will realise, of course, that what he's alluding to in these drawings is a Maori myth. The myth that after death, the, the spirit of the dead person passes up the beaches of the west coast, past Muruai, past Ahipara, to Teirayinga, from which point it leaps off and makes the return journey to Hawaii. That myth became very important to the Khan. He, he, he built many paintings and series around that notion. And of course, he identified with it closely because he was living at Murawai and walking that beach constantly. In those Easter drawings, he was obviously reflecting on the death of his friend, still trying to expiate that guilt and grief that he felt at having lost, having been unreconciled to his old friend at the point of his death. As the year 1973 went on, he got involved in a major series 
which is sometimes called the Beach Walk series, although that was not a, a term that McCann himself ever used. But one needs to call them something because what he called them was A, B, C, and D, <laughs> which is uh, not particularly eloquent, is it? And series D consists of five panels, and the most unusual thing about it, I suppose, is the way that it is hung. Because on this one here, it says D5, panel under D3. So that's where it has to hang immediately under D3. Colin, he painted about 2,000 works over his 40-year career, and this was the only time that he ever did that. And what does it do? Of course, it turns it into a cross. And so I guess it underlines the spiritual theme which is working through these paintings. So they've got various levels. You know, there's a personal level, the memory, grieving, expiating guilt of a, of a friend walking the beach on wintry days. There is the Maori level, the, the whole idea of the the spirit passing after death up the beaches to the Cape, and at the Christian level. The walk is also a version of the Stations of the Cross, meditating, I suppose, on the crucifixion and everything that that means to Christians. The Ahipara connects with the spirit path imagery that links through these paintings. And otherwise, I think of them as you know, like snapshots, the beach as it looked on this particular day. But they're not realist either, are they? they? Yes, you can see sky, you can see water, you can see sand, but they're also abstract paintings uh, as well as realist paintings. And so often in Collins' late work, it does have this layering of meanings. You can read it one way or you can read it another. In my personal opinion, one of one of the great paintings by Colin McCann. And that's that's my story. Thank you.